Hello viewers and welcome to the show. Today I sat with Dimitris Avramopoulos, Migration, Home Affairs and Citizenship Commissioner with the European Commission to talk about the biggest concern of the day, refugees. Stay with us. Thank you so much for taking time to be with the Ethiopian Television Commissioner. Uh, I heard that this is your first visit to Ethiopia. Can you tell us if there is any special purpose or just one of those visits in Africa? Let me start by telling you that I am in Ethiopia, in Addis Ababa, only for two days, but um, I have the feeling that I'm here at least for one month. It's a great country. And um, I was um, um, received in a very warm and cordial way. For me, it was a discovery. But the main uh, reason of my visit was not tourism. Hopefully, one day I will come back with my family to discover more of this beautiful country. I represent here the European Union in a conference with the follow-up of the Valletta Summit, whereas you remember the leaders of Africa and Europe met and they decided to work together in order to manage migration. And, of course, in order to have some direct uh, uh, meetings and contacts with uh, the leadership of uh, uh, Ethiopia. I met uh, um, the Prime Minister, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Minister of Peace. And today, just some minutes ago, uh, my visit um, finished uh, with uh, a meeting, uh, in a meeting with uh, the President of the Republic, this uh, great uh, uh, lady. And believe me, some minutes before I catch a flight to go back uh, to, to Europe. I am convinced that uh, this country, this nation, is uh, changing to the better. All these big reforms undertaken by the government are to the better of this country, but also of the whole uh, uh, region. I was telling before that uh, Ethiopia is not just one more African country. It is a great nation with uh, a great tradition, history. A history that was always linked to Europe. And today, in this global landscape, in this volatile global situation, if there are two stakeholders that they can really work together in the name of peace, stability, cooperation, progress, is Europe and Africa in general. And within Africa, Ethiopia can play a leading uh, role. So I conveyed a strong message to the authorities, to the government, to the leadership uh, of, um, of Ethiopia. And today I'm living, taking back a very strong message to the European leadership that there is a common will to work together in order to address and manage all these big challenging issues, including migration and security. It's good for you to know and for our spectators that uh, I'm responsible on behalf of the European Union, both for migration and security. These two issues prevail right now, not only in the European political agenda, but in the global political agenda. Yeah, we're going to talk more about migration, by the way. But I wanted to comment on the current reform the country is going on. You know, it's political. We have political reform, economic reform. But would you point point out the reform that you think is very supportive for the future of Ethiopia? I can tell you that you have a very strong and wise, determined, visionary leadership. All these reforms undertaken by the government, and as I said in the beginning, I'm sure will inaugurate a new era for uh, this great uh, nation. Deeper democratic institutions, more transparency, uh, a leading uh, role in the whole uh, region, structural uh, reforms, a new administration, a deep change on everything. I would say, and that's how I would interpret it, a revolutionary reform, but in democratic terms and rules. And this is what will ensure a better future for everybody. I noticed that uh, 
priority is given to the younger generations. You know, Ethiopia is uh, characterized by a democratic, demographic explosion. The majority of the population of Ethiopia are young people, and they demand from their authorities, from their political representatives, from their leadership, to provide them with more opportunities for the future. Not only in finding a job, but in opening a very auspicious horizon for them to exercise their right to life here in conditions of stability and security. And this country is blessed by God, history and nature. You have everything here. What the country needs is a strategy for the future. So, I can tell you that what has been decided will be supported, first of all, by the citizens of Ethiopia. And at the same time, since everything today has taken international dimensions, it will be in the interest of the neighborhood. A neighborhood that has suffered a lot in the past. A, let me tell you here that uh, it is to be praised and commended that the government, in such a short period, managed to solve this problem with Eritrea. It was a very strong signal to the whole world how does the leadership is perceiving its role that goes beyond the borders of, of the country. So, I'm very optimistic. And uh, as someone who respects and loves this nation, I wish it from the depth of my heart all these reforms to be realized as soon as possible. Well, the recent visit of the Prime Minister to the European countries uh, is said very fruitful in Ethiopia because you know the World Bank and, and we get uh, financial support from the World Bank and that said uh, a very big support in uh, World Bank. So what do you think is the reason for the support? Is it just the reform or there is something else? As you very correctly said, uh, the Prime Minister visited uh, Brussels recently and more visits will take place in the future, not only uh, in, in Europe, but also in, uh, in Ethiopia. But let me tell you something. Yes, the financial support is there. The political support is there. But it's not only about money. As I explained to you before, the role of these countries is of great importance for the region and for the whole uh, world. So we are standing by the authorities and the government of uh, Ethiopia in order to continue and implement uh, its strategy in, in the region. We were talking before, for instance, about migration. The country will have our full support, financially, operationally, practically. Today we discussed with the Minister of Peace about it. How can we do it? Also with the Prime Minister. And within this, in the next week, uh, a dialogue will start between experts of the Ethiopian government and the European Union to set up a framework of cooperation in the future on migration. The same is on security, because security is also on the top of the national agenda. And uh, we in Europe, we have suffered a lot during the last five years. You all, we all know what happened there, all these tragic occurrences, terrorist attacks. and. Uh, we have built our own architectures on security, our know-how, our knowledge, our best practices will be shared with the Ethiopian government. The same is in the field of migration. On migration, we know that the country is also under pressure. More than four million people are residing right now in Ethiopia. Three million are migrants, and one million refugees from neighboring countries. And I have to commend and praise not only the authorities, but also the people of Ethiopia for hosting them with dignity and respect. But Ethiopia cannot manage this situation alone. It needs our support. And this is what I would like to confirm, replying to your question. We are here to support Ethiopia operationally, practically, and finally. Let's talk now about uh, the migration issue, which is the, you know, the biggest problem in our world. Uh, you know, as, as you said, Ethiopia hosts the biggest uh, refuge uh, in the world, actually. When we talk about migration today, 
and the refugee issues, we shouldn't um, consider it as a regional problem. It has become a global one. Approximately 75 million refugees are somewhere in the world right now, and more than 260 million migrants. I always say that this era will be qualified by the historians of the future as the era of human mobility. So it is a global obligation and responsibility to address this issue. That's why the United Nations were mobilized following our initiative. They held an extraordinary General Assembly two years ago, and more has to be done in the future. And the European Union has taken the lead, because in the beginning we have been taken by surprise. I want to be frank with you. Europe didn't know how to handle migration four years ago. Now we know. We have made great progress. And what we have achieved has to be shared with other countries in the world, other parts of the world. But we have to establish good relations with countries of origin, countries of transit. We call them in Europe third countries. I don't like this expression. There are no third countries. There are countries also under pressure. And we are on the same side, both on migration and security. And this is what brings us closer to each other. That's why we must cooperate. And as I said before, we have a very clear strategy of cooperation on that. And here in Ethiopia, we have discovered, I have discovered, very reliable, strong and determined interlocutors to do so. And I really count on that in order to manage these two issues effectively together in the future. Yeah, I, w I was about to mention the critics which says, you know, Africa hosts the, the, the majority of refugees with its, you know, economic problem. And why not the, uh, the European countries with better economic conditions? They can, they do it. Europe right now is uh, hosting a big number of refugees. I, I, remi I remind you, you know, Europe was and remains a destination. Europe is not going to become a fortress. Europe's Europe is based on democratic values. Europe was always open. What we said is to stop the irregular migration. The, as far as the refugee dimension is concerned, the ones who are in need of international protection will have it, and they have it. We are bound by international um, uh, conventions. As far as the others want to come irregularly or illegally to Europe, they must understand that there are laws that have to be respected in Europe. So we have changed our migration policy. It's better to say we have adopted a migration policy. Now we have appointed migration um, liaison officers in all the, our delegations across the world. So someone who wants to come to Europe can apply. His application will be examined and he will be accepted. But all these waves, all these flows of irregular migration cannot continue. First of all, all these desperate people, I understand I'm in their position, they're in the hands of scrupulous smugglers. They don't care about their lives. That's why thousands of them lost their lives in, in the Mediterranean Sea. This is our priority, to save lives. And the ones who are coming, even if they have arrived on the European shores in an irregular way, they have to be treated with dignity and respect. But at the same time, it's very important to send a signal to the whole world that Europe is not a fortress, will never become a fortress, but laws have to be respected. Yeah, you've been talking about strategic support. What is that strategic support you're looking with African countries, including Ethiopia? Strategic partnership means that, first of all, we adopt a common understanding of the situation. We are all on the same side. You said it before. Ethiopia is hosting a big number of migrants and refugees. The same it happens in other countries in the region, in Morocco, in Tunisia, in Turkey from the other side of the Mediterranean, in Lebanon, in Jordan. So, what do we mean when we say a common strategy? It's a strong cooperation. First of all, to stem the flows. Second, to create the necessary conditions for the ones who want to come to Europe to prefer to stay in their homeland. We are here to support all these countries in terms of development, economically. We are here to do that. But in order to achieve it, we have to work together. We have to adopt a common platform on that, a common strategy. It's not Europe and the others, it's Europe with the others. 
Okay, let's talk about the usage of the supports, I mean the financial support specifically for the African countries. Uh, you know, it's, it's been said that the support is not uh, placed in the right place. As you said, the youth are in a great um, you know, risk, they risk even their life to get a better life. And the European, I mean the EU is okay. helping the African countries, but how do you monitor the support you give? Everything is monitored. Let me, let me tell you one thing. When we talk about financial support, this amount of money is not going directly to the national budget of a country. It has to support UNHCR, United Nations, International Organization of Migration. They operate on the ground and they are our strongest allies and partners in order to, managing, uh, in order to manage migration. So, yes, we are ready to support financially all policies that have to do with uh, the treatment of migrants, to provide them with shelter, medical support, food, education, and in some cases even jobs. And so far the European Union has spent a lot of money. But it is not only about money. It's how do we perceive we understand and we decide to cooperate together in order to address these challenges. In the beginning, it was the problem of Europe. Some in Europe believe that uh, a good cooperation with third countries would just stem the flow. No, it is not enough. All these countries are under pressure. And some of these countries are the heavier pressure compared to Europe. I gave you some number before. And as far as Europe is concerned, since uh, I didn't give you the number before, since 2015, more than 1.2 million people have managed to cross the European borders. In a totally uncontrolled way in the beginning, because as I told you, Europe has been taken by surprise. Now, most of them, they are identified and registered. And many of them have already found very hostable, a very hostile environment and a, a, a safe haven in Europe. And the majority of the European countries had opened their doors. Yes, there are still some countries in Europe. I would say some governments in Europe that are not friendly towards migration. We try to change their mindset, to remind them what are the values and the principles upon which Europe is built. And I mentioned the, these principles before. But also a question of solidarity and responsibility, the two basic values the, that can define the creation of the European Union during the last 60 years. And uh, some believe, as I said this morning, that it would be the economic crisis that would put in danger the European project. Finally, it was the migration crisis in the beginning, because it was abused as an issue by the populist movement in Europe. So we have to cope with the big political problem. But we are not where we were five years ago. We are not in a crisis uh, uh, mode anymore. We manage migration. And we have deployed um, a, a plan of cooperation with countries around Europe. Partners, strategic partners. And one of these countries is Ethiopia. That's why I'm here. And as I said in the beginning, I leave this country with a great respect for these people a great admiration for all these achievements here, for all these reforms that are undergoing. And I believe that uh, Ethiopia can really play a leading role in the region in the name of peace, cooperation, stability, and democratic values. Well, uh, as you said, Ethiopia hosts the, major, the, the majority of the refugees, especially from Africa. And we have to, in this uh, ad a new uh, plan of refugee response plan of 2018 which enabled the refugees to work in uh, the newly established uh, industrial zones and uh, you know uh, getting education from technical schools and everything and we are ready how do you see that project it's a, it's, it's a great project and we are ready to support we are ready to support this kind of initiatives i was given some details today by the the, 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 the minister uh, of peace and as I told you before, uh, all these issues will be uh, discussed in the meeting that will start uh, 
uh, next week at a technical level and it will be upgraded within the next month at a political uh, level. But since you mentioned it, uh, the, it is to be praised that it is happening in uh, Ethiopia. And we are ready to support operationally, practically and financially the Ethiopian government uh, to, um, to, to continue on this line. One last question. <laughs> uh, you've been proposed, you proposed, I think, for especially the Northern African countries to uh, establish a per, uh, temporary shelter for refugees. In. How do, how's proposed. that going? We have never proposed uh, really? something like this. And, and we heard that the African countries refused such as Tunis or something, that right? That was an idea that was. Uh, I saw it in the Guardian, and you, you've been quoted. I have never proposed it. I took note of an idea that was flying in the air, uh, proposed by uh, some in Europe, that it would be good if uh, uh, some countries in this region could uh, accept to set up disembarkation centers and all those things. But my question, when the, this uh, idea started flying, was, do you know any country that is ready to accept it? Nobody. So it was uh, an idea. You know, uh, during these uh, four years, uh, I have been listening to many, many ideas. What I want to listen is to practical solutions to this problem. And this issue is not only a European one. It is not a regional one. It's a global one. That's why the whole world should stick united in order to address this issue. Because as I said at the beginning, this phenomenon came to stay for many decades. So we have to adopt a future-proof strategy on migration, and the same is on uh, security, and we are working on that. And the European Union has taken the lead and has shown the way to the others. Because our policy and our strategy is always based on humanitarian values and on democratic principles. And we do not intend to make any concession on that. This is what Europe is today, and this is what is the main European message sent to everybody. And as far as the countries in the region are concerned, it is a continuous message of respect and trust. And believe me, these two words dominated in our discussions here in Addis Ababa. And I'm grateful to the leadership of this great nation for this excellent cooperation. We are still in the beginning. More has to be done in the future. And as far as I'm concerned, I can tell you that I came here as a commissioner of the European Union and I'm living tonight as an ambassador of Ethiopia. Wow, that's very impressive. And thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure all mine. Thank you. Well, that does it for today. Join us on ETV Language for this and other programs. This is Aklulu, along with our cameraman. Thanks and bye-bye.